All right, y'all, so this week's research spotlight is the Association of Foot Arch Posture and Prior History of Shoulder or Elbow Surgery in Elite Level Baseball Pitchers. So this article was sent to me by a good friend of mine, Peyton Cutting. She's a big softball junkie. Um, she sent it through a little journal club I have going with some kids that I graduated with and some friends. And it's kind of nice because I probably never would have come across this article uh, doing article searches for patients that I'm working with um, because I don't work with baseball players. But I found it interesting and I still think it has some really good points uh, for everybody that's in, in PT or in the healthcare field to kind of, to kind of think about. So th we'll talk about the article a little bit uh, first and then I'll kind of talk about how I think it might carry over. So the article looked at Division One and professional sports teams or baseball teams for two years and it looked at the association of the longitudinal arch angle. So basically what your foot shape is like. Do you have a typical foot shape? Do you have a really high arch or do you have a really flat arch? Um, and the association that they found with that and players who had had shoulder or elbow surgeries in the past. So they measured the angle between the first ray, the navicular tuberosity, and the medial malleolus, and they classified um, pitchers as either pes planus, typical, or pes cavus. And we know that, that pes cavus is more of that high arch or rigid foot, and pes planus is that flatter arch, flat foot, more flexible. And they wanted to see if there was any difference in whether or not it was in the stride limb or in the stance limb, and if it had any correlation to uh, a history of shoulder or elbow surgery. So a lot of studies have looked at shoulder and elbow injuries in baseball players. There's been some studies that have looked at arch height and lower extremity injuries for pitchers, but there wasn't any, at least to these authors' knowledge, that kind of linked the arch height to possibility of shoulder or history of shoulder or elbow injury. So this study looked at uh, these pitchers and they ruled anybody out who had a history of lower extremity injury because that would kind of bias the results. And the highest odds ratio was for pitchers who had pes planus in their stance limb, so the leg that they're pivoting on and, and weight bearing on mostly to pitch, had the highest odds ratio of 3.7 for having a history of shoulder or elbow injury. And um, there was, they also found a, a stronger um, p-value for any abnormal pes planus or pes cavus rather than typical but uh, pes planus was the strongest correlation. And so that's really interesting because that tells us that maybe in patients, particularly pitchers, who are having shoulder or elbow issues, we need to consider what their arch height is and see if that is playing or adding into stresses or not allowing for adequate stress responses throughout their body, throughout the pitching motion. So it might be something for physical therapists, athletic trainers, personal trainers to think about if um, patients are demonstrating shoulder or elbow pain. And so one of the main takeaways was that it's something that needs to be considered in, in pitchers who are demonstrating shoulder or elbow pain and that there might be um, viable rehab opportunities for their foot arch if they're demonstrating those symptoms and you can't find another cause that's kind of uh, correlated to it. But I think what, where it can kind of translate into other rehab outside of just baseball is just how interconnected and how linked our body systems are. I mean, a, an issue with your foot appears to have some, some connection to shoulder and elbow injuries in such a dynamic motion as pitching. Um, and, you know, maybe in our patients who use walkers or canes, they might have shoulder or elbow issues or wrist issues that are coming from elsewhere in the body and not necessarily on in their you know arm. And although they're probably using those uh, those assistive devices because they have endurance or, or balance or lower extremity issues already, it might be something as simple as their their foot arch that could be leading to those um, just because their foot is not properly able to transmit or to manage loads that are placed on it to other joints in the body or uh, within the, within itself. So that's kind of a very broad generalization, but uh, I really think it's just important that as practitioners, we realize that the whole body is so interconnected. You know, we, we know the idea of the, the fascial sweater. 
Um, Dr. Winslow, I think I was a big uh, proponent of that, of that, and it's it's so true that every aspect of our body is interconnected to, uh, to some extent, even if it's musculoskeletal in nature and not neuro in nature, because in my opinion, neuro in nature, it's even more connected. Um, but great article. Thanks for sending it, Peyton. I think it's important and it's uh, interesting because it kind of like looks at something we maybe wouldn't typically think about. So that's this week's research article of the week. Thanks for watching.